So this week we're talking about the Detroit Lions. The Detroit Lions. Man, you know, what's there to say? They've lost for a really long time. Do they have any real fans? I know one, and he walked. Yeah, but it's all good. Would y'all ever go to, like, Detroit for vacation? Uh, Yeah, just to go see the Motown building. I knew he was going to say that. I knew he was going to say that. You want to go take that? Go see a Pistons game at the Palace? That's not really in Detroit, is it? Or did they move it back? No, I guess it's not anymore. It's it's, It's in the burbs. Yeah. It is it's now just... no longer the palace. It is Little Caesars Arena. Thank you very nice. much. Home of the Detroit Pistons and the, the $5 Detroit pizza. Red Wings. The, the, yeah, the worst pizza. All right, guys. Let's dive into the Detroit Lions, though. So this team, I mean, let's give a little backstory. Horrific drafting in the past 20 years. Uh, they, had a, they had a couple moments where they pushed they almost got there they turned it around with matthew stafford and calvin johnson and then when you have one of the top five greatest football talents of all time and count calvin johnson most likely physical they somehow screwed up two different hall of famers two goats at their positions reti- retirements they, they were so bad they pushed them into retirement but we're talking about them this year and this year they started off winning everyone's heart on yeah. uh hard knocks. hard knocks hard knocks thank you and you know what they start the, that opening game they went toe to toe with the 11 1 philadelphia eagles it was like what 37 to 35 got everyone real hot it was a real <laughs> steamy room in detroit and then some bad things happened Amon ross st brown went down for two three games and then you have uh you jared goff down. yeah Jared Goff was struggling as well in the beginning of the season. So they they sputtered. But now, mid-season, we're looking at a much better team than it says on paper. They just absolutely destroyed the Jacksonville Jaguars this week. And let me tell you, the bones on this team, they don't have the skeleton doesn't have scoliosis anymore. We got an actual athlete set of bones. Like this, these guys actually have some real depth to them. Great offensive line. You got two good running backs. You got a stud number one wide receiver that you found in the fourth round. You trade away TJ Hawkinson. You got extra picks. That's going to open up some cap room. Guys, I'm going to talk about if the Lions make the right pick here. We're going to talk about in the next few minutes. I think that they could make the playoffs next year. Whoa, 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 whoa. What are you talking about next year, bro? I'm going to put it this way. Every team ahead of them in the NFC has a significantly harder schedule than the Lions. The Lions could win out. Hey, I'd love for them to make a run, man. That'd be awesome. And I want to throw yeah. this out there. At 5-7, and seven, they are the best 5-7 and seven team in the NFL. Not only have they only lost, they've lost most of their close, close games <laughs> by four or less. <laughs> by four or less. All right, all right. Pump, pump your brakes there, man. Five and seven is five and seven. They've got the Vikings, the Jets, the Panthers, the Bears, and the Packers. I mean, that's not. I mean, yeah, they could win all those games. They could lose all those games. Yeah, uh, that's, that's going to be a rough. Game, yes. They're not going to lose to the Packers. Get out of here. <laughs> Get out of here. Packers are dead. I don't know. Hey. They just beat the Bears on Sunday. I thought Chicago. Was Again, be the Bears are also too. dead. I mean, hey, look. So. Uh, to start the season off, the Detroit Lions offense looked amazing, right? They was on a breakneck pace. Um, the, the problem was the defense was historically bad, right? Defense yeah. has gotten better as the season went on. And so obviously, to your point, Nate, they've started to win some games. They're going to have, what, maybe two picks uh, within the top 10 just from the Jared Goff trade, right? Yeah. So um, they're going to kind of have their pick of the litter. If yeah, one of those picks is high enough. enough um, obviously, you probably want to go quarterback with one, uh, with one of those picks, and then you want to get the the best other player that's not a receiver. You already got Amon Ross St. Brown. You got Jameson Williams, who uh, was just activated, right? So you expect them to be a stud. They're legit on the outside. Um, they traded TJ Hawkinson. Um, I don't even know who they have at tight end, but you don't trade a guy like Hawkinson at tight end unless you got some type of You do of if you don't think he's worth the point. money. There yeah. you go. And then, I mean, you still, you got DeAndre Swift, they're running back. You got Jamal Williams, who's an upcoming free agent. 
Um, but Jamal Williams is just one of those dudes you want to have on your team. He he does all the right good. things. Yeah. Yeah. They have the elite pieces on offense, obviously, right? Uh, at the wide receiver position and then at the running back position. One of the key things is they're obviously, they continue to win games and that's pushing their own uh, draft pick back into the middle of the first round a little bit at this point. Uh, so like if they continue to keep winning games, that's just gonna get lower. But then the Rams pick, they've gotten super lucky with that. Um, you know, they're they're benefiting big time off of that trade. Uh, you know, obviously they lost- It's gonna be lost... a top five pick. Yeah, clearly. And that could be where they, they grab the, uh, you know, that could be where they draft the quarterback. Uh, who they draft a quarterback, that's going to be the big debate, uh, assuming oh, that's the route that they go. You. Oh, I got a take for you. The Detroit Lions should not take a quarterback. Yeah. I mean, all, you're stuck with, all, l- l- hear me out. At all in the first round? Here. Hear me out. So. <laughs> Nate, Nate, like, yo, come on, bro. Wait, wait, wait. All right, listen, listen, listen. All right, no, 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 no. I'm in the middle of this I take. Hear, I want to hear this take. All right, thank you. <clears throat> so, hear me out. Jared Goff, you're stuck with this contract. It's stuck on your roster for what, another two years, right? No, no, there's an easy out this season. Hear me out. Okay. Jared Goff is really good at running a play action offense. We've seen him go to the Super Bowl. We've seen him have an MVPS season. The traits are there. The hardest part is finding a quarterback that fits the style that you actually want to play with. He fits the style. You have the wide receiver core. You have the number one guy. You have the guy with the electric speed. You could bring DJ Shark back. He started to have a connection with him. I, a guy that I was looking at is Michael Mayer is out of Notre Dame. They could get him. It, you could take him at that second first round draft pick. That's what they wanted Hawkinson to become, that guy that could frame out. But that's what Michael yeah. Mayer is so good at, is using his body to actually frame out, become a big target, and make himself available in the red zone. Yeah. I think the offense has its bones here. I think this is a top 10 offense next yeah. year. So, so why are we so, still spending draft picks? On, uh, uh, why are we if, if you fill that spot. You, but you could also look at a guy like Mike Gusecki coming in and leaving Miami who's yeah, not getting enough work. Options in Dalton that. Schultz might be available on the free agency. So I'm saying let's go and build this young defense. Yeah. Jeff Akuda is actually showing life. We thought he was a bust for two that. years. Aiden Hutchinson's got six sacks as a rookie. He's not getting the biggest win rate when it comes to passing, but that's going to come with experience, more time in the gym. He's had two interceptions as a rookie. This is a playmaker. You have bones. So why not go out and build up this defense so you have a beast that matches Dan Campbell's mentality. You have a team that can run the ball, make big plays. You have a quarterback that's been to the Super Bowl, even though he struggles at times, but his confidence, he's looking better and better each game. And he knows how to use a deep threat. Jamison Williams is just gonna help this offense by taking the top off. I don't think they should draft a quarterback. Build up that defense. Get some young playmakers in there. Bring in a veteran like Levante David. Bring in a safety like Jesse Bates. If the Bengals have been messing around, not wanting to sign this pro, young pro bowler for a couple of years, you could bring in a safety at 26 going into his prime. I'm telling you, they make these right draft picks and they make a great defense, get a real pass rush going. Someone next to Aiden Hutchinson, say they got Will Anderson That's and the Aiden Hutchinson. The Lions, they could either trade back on this pick and assume more draft capital which is probably a huge deal because there's other there's a team like uh, the Indianapolis Colts kind of dangling around at number yes. nine right there, 10. Yeah. yeah, they need a quarterback, so you could leverage that pick into something bigger. Trade back. I like Brandon's idea to trade back. If not, if you're not going to trade back, you can't get the offer that you want or the deal that you want done. If Will simple. Anderson's sitting there, you, you it's, still it's, trade it's back. It's the, it's, here's, here's, the, here's the simplest <sighs> solution I can give you. You Maybe. take the best of you take the best available prospect. The New York Jets and the Seattle Seahawks, they both had great drafts. And they both had assets kind of later. Seattle kind of did uh they, they got a lot of their picks that's giving them really good time later in the draft. Mid-round, right? Jets yeah. had they've been a lot bad of equity up at the in the draft Even during Legion of Boots. Early. You know what I'm saying? So um those are two teams that didn't draft quarterback last year. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. I mean, there is an avenue to, okay, we stay what we have at quarterback because as long as the the weapons and the tools are there offensively and defensively, you're going to always be competitive. 